How's it going everybody? Welcome to the channel and the video review or my experience with the Ichin Wizard X220. I got it all set up, ready to go. It is an X-frame carbon fiber. Uh, the carbon fiber frame is a thick. I believe uh, they uh, say it is four millimeter in thickness. Uh, on the bottom plate there looks about two millimeters and the top plate looks around one, one and a half millimeter in thickness. Side panels, there's the USB uh, connection port right there. Uh, it has come uh, with nothing assembled. Uh, you have to screw on your own propellers and you do have to go all the way down. Uh, the shaft is pretty long, so be aware of that. And of course, the uh, the silver nuts go on the right top and on the left bottom, and the black ones go on the bottom right and on the left uh, top. Uh, well, this is an ARF version. It does not come with a receiver. So you will have to uh, put your own PPM or SBUS receiver. I chose the SBUS. So uh, there's a receiver wire, the RX wire, that is already uh, installed on the board itself. Uh, you just have to take it off and put it on the opposite side on the IO port number two and put your receiver on there. I have the uh, FR Sky X4R receiver and it was really easy to set up and bind uh, press the button power up the uh, quadcopter and press the bind button on your model select it on your tyrannus so that was really easy the next thing i did was uh, uh after that i just kind of double-sided taped the the receiver uh inside right on top of the uh the board there as you can see if you can see that anyways uh, I just left the original antenna. You gotta screw, screw this thing on pretty tight in order for uh, the antenna itself not to move. So you really gotta go and uh, use a little tool to screw it down so it gets a nice tight uh, fit. And don't take it off because every time you turn it on, if you don't have the uh, antenna on, you can fry the, uh, the transmitter. And another thing I did with the um, the receiver antennas, uh, pretty long antennas actually, I took it out of those little holes that is already pre-holed on the top plate. And what I did was I put a um, couple of coffee straws, uh, put it in there, and I hot glued the coffee straw right on the board on the top so it doesn't move around. So that should work, hopefully. And also what I did was um, on the battery strap, they, they give you this one battery strap, of course, it says Ichin on it, and uh, it comes uh, on the front. There's two battery strap holes on the plate, so that's really nice. So I moved it to the back, and the reason why is because I wanted to put a camera up in the front, but it juts out so far that it kind of blocks the view of your FPV camera. So what I did was I uh, put another Velcro uh, a little bit longer one and I got my run cam and on my run cam I'm sticking all over the velcro with my gloves there on my run cam on the bottom holster what I did was I put a couple of foam pieces one longer and one a little bit shorter so it gives a little bit of an angle up I'm not that very speedy so I don't need the angle up that high <laughs> I'm just gonna use it uh, a slight tilt and what I also put was a, a Velcro tab that comes with those uh, 600 milliamp, uh, uh, the brushed mo uh, motor racers for the battery. I just put that on the bottom there. So uh, I can put my camera Velcro right on top of the battery Velcro so it won't slide off. And I'm using the battery to give the, uh, the camera a slight tilt and just strap it down. It's not the strongest of the straps, but I do have this um, battery strap to hold the battery down. So hopefully that works out okay. And if I want a little bit bigger tilt, all I gotta do is put another little spacer there to give it a little bit more angle up. So we'll see how that works out. So I haven't flown it yet. I just put the props on right now. And the little prop uh, tightening tool that they give you made out of carbon fiber, the small little uh, wrench, doesn't work very well so what you need to do is get yourself a nice um, 
uh, socket and uh, push that down all the way to the bottom to the motor. So let's go for a little uh, line of sight hover flight test first and then see uh, if I can do some uh, goggles flying. So let's go. Green lights in the front. Yeah, green lights in the front and red lights in the back. All right, we should be bounded. And let's see if it spins. Yes, it does spin. I'm going to fly around. Uh, first in angle mode here so let's uh, see if it takes off nice now this is my first hover so I don't want to go uh, buck wild here and it seems to be hovering really, really nice. It's a little top heavy with all that battery and the camera on the top. But check it out. Not much wind today. I can feel a lot of power on my fingertips here. There's the wind. Oh yeah. Yep, very smooth. Yep, you can fly it really slow. Nice. Nice. Okay, here goes the punch. Yep. One more punch. Okay, there's a little bit of oscillation coming down. A little bit of prop wash probably, but not much. Yeah, not that much. Oh yeah, lots of power man, lots of power. Nice. Not bad, not bad. I am liking this one. All 
All right, let's bring it in for a landing here. Nice. All right, that was the first FPV flight with the uh, Iqin Wizard. Uh, and I was using the Iqin uh, VRD2 goggles because the frequency uh, did not match onto my Fat Shark goggles. So what you need to do is you need to go into the transmitter here on the bottom and you see those dip switches. Well, they're plastic covered, so you gotta uh, cut it out a little bit like I did there if you can see that I did, took a knife and cut that out so I can open it up and Use a little pin to move one of the dip switches now. I have uh, Connection with my the same frequency with my fat shark goggles So I want to do a second FPV run with the fat shark goggles. All right, so let's go <laughs> 